Welcome to uh, this introduction tutorial on GeneFriends, which is a tool for gene function prediction uh, based on co-expression data for various model organisms, as I will show in the next few minutes. So this is the main page of, of GeneFriends. And in order to start an analysis, you just simply click on Start the Analysis. Now, this will open various options. First of all, there are various options for species, uh, including humans, of course, uh, and several animals, uh, including cows, roundworms, C. elegans, uh, zebrafish, the fruit fly, Drosophila melanogaster, uh, chicken, mice, yeast, uh, as well as rats. So there's also various uh, little buttons you can click in order if you need more assistance uh, for the various aspects of the tool. But this tutorial should give you uh, an introduction on how to use the main features of Gene Friends for new users. Uh, there's also an instruction manual, uh, and there's also a small uh, tutorial embedded uh, regarding how the, the, the tool works, which uh, in case you're interested in some more information. But so let's let's get started and uh, let's look at the main feature. So there's various options, as I said. One of them is in terms of species, but it's important to point out that there's way more data for humans than for other species. So for example, for humans, you have different data sources, which I'll come back in a second. But for example, if you use any of the other species, you don't have, doesn't give you any options in terms of, of data source. Um, the only other species for which some further options are available is the mouse. Again, there's no option in data source, but you can choose different types of objects, which are basically genes or transcripts. And this is available for humans as well, as I'll show in a few minutes. In terms of tissues, these are also available for mice as well as for humans, but not for the other species. Having said that, uh, for example, a lot of data from Drosophila and C. elegans comes from whole organisms. Um, so you have available data for all tissues combined. And this all tissues combined data is all available for also available for humans and mice. So let's look a, a little bit more about humans and human data. Uh, as I mentioned, there's genes and transcripts, and there's different data sorts. Uh, SRA stands for short read archive, which is the main data source used for building gene friends. But in addition to SRA, we also have GTX data and TCGA data. So you can use this as additional data sources. The most uh, popular and most widely used data source, and also the bigger, is SRA. So that, that's what I will focus here now. And as I said, for humans and mice, there's data for different tissues. So if you're interested in specific types of tissues and co-expression, then these are available. Um, although it's important to also point out that different tissues will have different coverages, different sample sizes. Um, but if you're interested in a particular tissue, um, this is uh, how you select it. So once we, we have this, so I will use human data because that's, that's what most users employ and, um, and for which we have more data. We can select particular kinds of genes you're interested. So because gene trends are guilt by association approach using co-expression networks, um, you can use individual genes or you can use combinations of genes. So for example, let's say we want to look into genes that are co-expressed with a BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes. So we just write BRCA1, BRCA2. Um, the system will accept different types of uh, identifiers, which you can see here. So gene symbol, and symbol, and trace IDs. Um, so again, you can use this little question marks for additional information. Uh, but gene symbols are accepted. So if you have bracket one and bracket two, and we click next then, so we're using all the tissues, ESRA, 
Um, so this is data from all tissues combined into one, which means it's going to have a bigger sample size. So if you're interested in general functions of a gene, this is what I suggest you use. So if you click next, then first the system will check if the genes are in the database. In this case, um, they are not in our database because I misspelled them. So I need to go back. Now you can, again, you can insert um, and simple IDs or entries IDs if uh, you want to avoid these problems. But if you want to simply, if you know the gene symbol, uh, you can um, use that. And if you misspell them, then the system will tell you that there was a mistake. So in this case, I correct the spelling and uh, the, the two genes input BRCA1 and BRCA2 are in the database. So we can see here, this is the symbol ID, which is what we use internally. And you can confirm, actually, you can click and link, get a link to ensemble if you want to uh, confirm that it's the right gene. Uh, here we go. So then, uh, so the person correlation threshold we'll look into a little bit later, uh, but it's only used for single gene analysis. If you're having more than two, two genes or more, then you don't need to input it. And then you click next, and it will give you the genes that are co-expressed with BRCA1 and BRCA2. So these are the results, so these are the friends, the gene friends of BRCA1 and BRCA2. Um, and you can explore each of them individually. So again, you can click and go to Ensembled if you want to learn more information uh, about genes that are co-expressed with BRCA1 or BRCA2. You can download and the list of full list of genes as a CSV file. You can browse it. Um, you can rank the genes um, you know, in, in many different ways by gene symbols. So normally, by default, they're ranked by p-value. That is the how that's reflective of how strongly this gene is co-expressed with your query genes, in this case, BRCA1 and BRCA2. Um, then you can use David, which is a, a, an external third-party uh, co-expression, uh, sorry, um, third-party uh, functional enrichment tool to see which Go terms are enriched in your um, results. So in this case, BRCA1 and BRCA2, of course, they're involved in DNA repair, DNA metabolism. So it's not surprising that the genes that co-expressed with BRCA1 and BRCA2 are strongly enriched for these terms, as you can see. Um, DNA repair, chromosome, cell response, to DNA damage, etc. Um, again, it gives you a lot of information. This is from, from David, uh, which you can also download as a CSV file. Analytics will give you just some uh, information on the type of genes you discover, whether they're uh, protein coding genes, link RNAs, uh, pseudogenes, etc., and also the chromosomal uh, distribution. Um, and one tool I find particularly useful is the network visualization, as it allows you to, to visualize um, your genes. So in this case, uh, BRCA1 is, was the query gene, uh, but you can also play with a top co express. So if you want to have fewer genes, or if you want to have more genes that are co expressed. Uh, and you can also play with um, uh, Pearson correlation threshold if you want to show um, more or less genes. So if you lower, you're going to uh, lower the threshold, you're going to have more genes in the network and vice versa. So in this case, for example, here you have BRCA1 and BRCA2, which were the two carried genes, uh, and then you have various other genes associations. So for example, this is, a, well, it's one of the Fanconi anemia genes. Uh, if you double click on it, it will take you to Ensemble, uh, where you can uh, find more information about it. Um, in green, for example, it also shows you uh, link RNAs. And here there's no pseudogenes, but would also show if there were any. Um, again, you can download it um, as well if you want to visualize it with other software. You can also save the results. So let's give you some names. So it's going to be BRCA genes. Let's call it that. And we can save them for later if we want to do further uh, analysis. So this will give you the main results. But again, you can download all of the results um, and the network for. Um, for further analysis. So let's try a different analysis now. So let's go back to our 
uh, the start of the analysis, let's say we want to analyze uh, non-coding transcript. So that's one of the advantages of Gene Friends is that it has many non-coding genes and non-coding um, transcripts, as well as uh, different splice variants that you can use. So there's a lot of possibilities for analysis here. So BRCA1 and BRCA2, of course, were what we use initially. These are protein coding genes. Um, but let's say we want to use something different. So this is a transcript. It's actually a transcript from a, um, from a microRNA. Uh, and we can analyze that as a transcript, it, in which case it will be matched to other to a co-expression database of transcripts, or it could be matched to a gene. So let's see if we try to, to match it to genes and we click next let's see if it's in our database it is in the database so so the system will automatically match the transcript to the corresponding gene and you will do so vice versa but if you do it the opposite if you put a transcript uh sorry if you put a gene and you try to looking for the transcript database by default it will try to uh it will find the the longest transcript in the gene now, because this is a single gene we're looking for, we can put a Pearson correlation threshold. Uh, the default is 0 0.5, which I have to say, it's, it, it's, it's, it depends a lot on the gene, um, but it's a good way to start. So let's see what other genes are co-expressed with our microRNA. So it turns out only one. Uh, one gene, only one gene is co-expressed with our microRNA. And of course, there will be no David analysis because we only have one gene. So, so that's not a lot. Let's go back and let's play a little bit with the Pearson correlation threshold. Let's say uh, 0 0.4. Let's see if that gives us some more genes. Well, it gives us one more, uh, one more gene. Well, let's, let's see 0 0.3. So if you look at 0 0.3, okay, now now we, we're starting to have more genes. Although, of course, the Pearson correlation of the co-expression between our query gene uh, and the, um, the results, it's, it's much um, more, it's a much weaker correlation. And so you, you cannot be as confident in these results. But the system allows you to play um, somewhat with the uh, with Pearson correlation and, and try to find uh, a value, a threshold that will suit your results. Likewise, with some genes, you may have too many other genes co-expressed with that. Um, so, so this will give you different types of analysis or different avenues for conducting different types of analysis with protein coding, with non-coding genes, with transcripts. Again, the gene that we are looking for, uh, or the transcript, this is actually a non-coding gene. It's a microRNA. Um, but one of the powerful aspects of gene friends is that it allows you to look into both protein coding genes and also non-coding genes and, and transcripts. Now, if you think, okay, so this is interesting, but hey, I would like to have my BRCA analysis back again. Well, here it is. It's still saved and you can still download the results. You can open it. You can download the, the David results. So, and you can delete it if it's no longer of interest. And if you clear the cache um, on your computer, it will no longer be available. So hopefully this gives you a, an idea um, of the basic and, and the most common analysis um, that GeneFriends is employed for. Um, so as I said, and just to recap, you can use it for different species, including humans, mice, and, and other model organisms. You can use it for humans and mice for, for different tissues, uh, for humans even for different data sets, including uh, GTAGs and, um, and TCGA. Um, and you can use it for different types of, uh, of genes or transcripts, at least for humans and mice. Um, so you can use it for protein coding, for non-coding genes, for different splice variants, for transcripts. Um, there's a lot of possibilities. And you can use it for individual genes, if there's an individual gene you're interested in, like I mentioned, with this particular microRNA, or if there's a, a group of genes association with disease or process that you may wish to study. There's also some examples if you want to play around. So if you click on example, it will give you an example of, of genes or transcripts um, that, you, uh, that you can use um, just to play with, with the system. And of course, ultimately, you want to use your own genes of interest or your own groups of genes associated with a disease or process that you are interested in. Now, lastly, you can also download the data. 
So you can download all the data underlying the co-expression networks for all the species and for all the tissues. Um, it's quite a lot of data. At the moment, it's in Dropbox. Um, but you can download all of it and do your own analysis individual. So for example, one, one analysis we don't provide here on gene friends is, is species comparisons. Um, that's not something that, that is implemented in the, the platform, uh, but you can do. You can download quick expression networks for, say, mice and humans, and you can perform comparisons between them um, if you're interested. Uh, additionally, all the code for, for gene sense is available on, on GitHub. So I hope that was helpful, and I hope that will help you get started with Gene Friends. Um, if you have uh, any questions, this is our team. This is me. Or feel free to drop me a leaning, uh, an email. So any questions, concerns, or suggestions, please feel free to get in touch. We are here to help you with your own analysis, and I hope Gene Friends is useful for your research. Thank you.